Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to my Black Friday edition for my Blu ray DVD update. So, 2015 is officially my second year doing Black Friday shopping. Last year, in 2014, it was my first time ever experiencing Black Friday. And so because of that, I got to do my Black Friday update last year, and I get to return doing one once again for this year. So of course, I'm gonna show you guys all the movies I bought. I bought a total of five movies for Black Friday this year, two Blu-rays, three DVDs. The Blu-rays costed $9.96 while the DVDs costed $7.96. So the first Blu-ray DVD combo pack I got for only $9.96 is Pitch Perfect 2. You guys just got pitch slapped. Oh, oh my God, I, I'm so sorry guys. Oh my God, I can't believe I did that. If you guys have seen my review for Pitch Perfect 2, I actually really enjoyed this film. And I'm actually one of those people that really enjoyed it more than the original. Now, don't get me wrong, the original was, it was decent, it was okay, but I do find the original to be pretty overrated, to be perfectly honest. That's great for those that were a huge fan of the original. I just wasn't too big of a fan of it. I laughed more here than the original. I thought the storyline was better here. And there was a surprising amount of depth to the characters. Like there was heart going around in Pitch Perfect 2, which I really appreciated. I actually found myself having more fun with the musical numbers here, even though I did really enjoy the musical numbers and the original film, but in the sequel, I was just jamming around to it. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, that's what Pitch Perfect 2 is. It's just a very fun, very funny sequel. I had a really great time watching it. And Elizabeth Banks, in all honesty, did a really great job directing this film. Since she worked on the first film, out of everyone, she's the one that knows a lot about the world of Pitch Perfect. So I thought she was a really great choice to direct this film. And I hear she's apparently going to direct the third film too. Is Pitch Perfect 3 necessary? I'm not sure about it, but I'm still willing to give it a chance whenever that comes out. But I really enjoyed Pitch Perfect 2, and now I own it on Blu-ray. The next Blu-ray I bought is Aladdin, the Diamond Edition. And I'm sorry if you can't see it too well because of the lighting, but yes, this was just like Pitch Perfect 2 where the Blu-ray combo pack is $9.96. You know, I really like Aladdin. I think Aladdin is a very wonderful Disney animated feature. Um, I have it on VHS, but never on Blu-ray, so I figured why not own a wonderful Disney animated feature on Blu-ray? And the transfer, just by looking at it, looks like it could be awesome. The animation to Aladdin, it's so beautiful looking. Just to look at the scope of the world and the details that surround the movie and its animation form, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I've seen this movie plenty of times and I never get tired of watching it in all honesty. The voice cast is really great. Of course, Robin Williams, may he rest in peace. He's fantastic as the voice of the genie. And of course, Scott Weiner, he was actually Steve and Full House. And I was actually surprised when I found that out like a couple of years ago when I was just looking up his filmography on IMDb. But yeah, he voices Aladdin. He does a really great job. And the same thing just goes for everyone that voices each of the characters. Of course, the musical numbers in this movie are just very memorable. They're very catchy. Jafar is a very menacing and great memorable villain. Honestly, I just can't wait to rewatch Aladdin. I look forward to seeing how the transfer is because Disney has been transferring a lot of their animated movies to Blu-ray and Aladdin, I definitely look forward to seeing how the Blu-ray transfer is going to go. I really love the slip cover over here. Let me just give you guys a little showing very quick. See, there's just the plain Blu-ray where you can actually see it a little bit better. Huh, what do you know? The next movie I have here is probably my favorite romantic movie of 2015 
Yeah, pretty much for the rest of the year, because let's be honest, 2015 really hasn't had a lot of romantic movies this year, but that movie is, indeed, Paper Towns. I thought Paper Towns was a great movie, to be honest. Like, yeah, I had a flaw with the ending. I thought it didn't have exactly the best payoff. But despite that, to be honest, this was a really great, well-made movie. I was really looking forward to Paper Towns because the trailers honestly were really great and I wasn't disappointed by this movie. It was just so well made. The movie has a very great message on just living in the moment. You know, focus on the now because you're just going to be missing a lot if all you're going to be thinking about your entire life is the future. It was actually quite different from the other romantic movies we've seen. This movie did try to be something different. It was trying to be something ambitious. I can't wait to rewatch Paper Towns because it's honestly a really great movie. And now the next movie I was hoping to get the Blu-ray for. Unfortunately, Walmart didn't have the Blu-ray combo pack for this movie. So I had to buy just the DVD for it, unfortunately. But you know what? I'm still happy I own it because that movie is Furious 7. This movie, it's a lot of fun. It's just an awesome action-packed ride of a movie. The action sequences are very well done. I thought James Wan did a very nice job directing this film. You could tell everyone had a lot of passion for this movie and they were having a lot of fun with it. But, but it also honored Paul Walker's character Brian very well. Just, you know, without getting the details on the ending for those that may not have seen Furious 7 yet, how they honored Paul Walker and the character of Brian was just amazing. I think this movie has one of the best endings of 2015 if I have to be perfectly honest. And I just want to thank Universal Studios and everyone involved in this project for being so respectful with Paul Walker. I really do appreciate it. We're gonna have a lot more of these movies coming. They're apparently not going to stop for any time soon now. We're going to have 8, 9, 10, and apparently some spin-offs with Dwayne The Rock Johnson's character Hobbs. So yeah, you guys, these movies, they're not going anywhere. I'm curious to see where they'll go with Furious 8, you know, without Paul Walker. So I hope this franchise, as long as it's still over the top and it still has fun with itself and it knows exactly what it wants to be, then you know what? Go ahead and bring more of these movies because they've been a lot of fun since Fast Five, in my opinion. Still really cool looking for a DVD, so I'm very happy with it. And now, the last movie I was also hoping to get for a Blu-ray, but sadly Walmart didn't have the Blu-ray for that either. And that is The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, not part two, part one. And honestly, this is where I'm gonna stop from here because I was very disappointed by The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Like, my goodness, talk about a huge disappointment. So, with that disappointing me, there's no way in hell I'm going to go out of my way and buy and own Part 2. So, The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay Part 1 are honestly the only Hunger Games movies worth owning. I already own the Hunger Games and Catching Fire, so I pretty much just completed my collection with Mockingjay Part 1. Now, I know people have problems with Mockingjay Part 1 being a slow burner, not really having any action happening, but honestly, I didn't mind that Part 1 was a slow burner. The movie was honestly very well paced. Even with it being a slow burner, I thought it was very well paced. I still found myself invested into the storyline. I like how the movie was building to what could have been an epic part 2, but really falls flat. I just feel like unlike part 2, even with this movie being slow, it at least still kept me invested. And I like the whole political aspect that part 1 was bringing with all of the propaganda, the things that Candace Everdeen had to do even though she didn't like it. So 
That's Hunger Games Monkey J Part 1, DVD 796. What did you guys get for Black Friday? Like, if you went Black Friday shopping, I would love to know what you guys got for Black Friday. Are there any movies that you picked up? Did you buy any toys? Did you buy any clothes? I would really be interested to know what you guys got for Black Friday. And I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving, too. I hope everyone ate very well. Thanksgiving was wonderful for me. It was just nice game to spend time with my family and of course Black Friday was honestly great for me too. I got to buy all these movies that I personally really enjoyed for such really great deals. This is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.